Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the origins of water on our beautiful planet Earth. We're going to discuss where all of this liquid water possibly came from, and discuss some of the more prominent theories that we currently have today. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now, when it comes to origin of water, we are still kind of not particularly certain where it really all came from, but there are three major uh, theories. There is theories discussing the external origin, theories discussing the internal origin, and theories that revolve more around life on Earth. Let's start with the external origins of water. Most of them actually kind of focus on... Um, water coming from essentially asteroids or comets. And in this case, obviously, it kind of makes sense that over billions of years, it's probable that uh, some of the water may have come to Earth from space via either asteroids or very large uh, objects such as, for example, planetesimals. Now, let me show you what uh, I mean by this by colliding Vesta with our beautiful planet Earth that currently has no water on it. So if we have a collision with Vesta, that's going to come here any second now, we're going to receive quite a large chunk of water because basically most of Vesta right now is essentially water. Let's actually remove all of the water from Earth right now and boom. And look at that. It's suddenly liquid water everywhere. Now, even though this uh, particular theory does make sense, there are a few problems with it. And the problems come mostly from um, analyzing various asteroids that we discovered on planet Earth and realizing that the water on Earth has a slightly different proportion of uh, different isotopes, specifically a molecule known as deuterium, uh, compared to the ones we, we found on the asteroids. As a matter of fact, it's so different that it seems to have completely different origin. Now, we've looked at various uh, comets, and so far, none of them seem to have similar water to the one on Earth. And the four comets we studied, specifically the Halley Comet, the Hyakutake Comet, Halley Bob, and also uh, 67P, also known as uh, Churyumov Gerasimenko, none of those comets seem to have water that's Earth like. We have found some asteroids, specifically more recently in January of 2018, that do have relatively similar composition of, li uh, not liquid, but just water in general to the one on Earth, but not exact. As a matter of fact, if we were to actually look at our beautiful companion, the moon, uh, we would uh, also find water there. And the water on the moon seems to be a lot more similar to water on Earth than water from those asteroids. And this kind of suggests uh, that maybe just maybe the external origin is not the best explanation right now. Which brings us to the second explanation, which actually deserves its own video, and I'm going to be talking uh, about a lot of this stuff more uh, tomorrow in the video that's going to come out tomorrow. So do come back and uh, you might actually learn about the second most prominent theory right now. But basically it's the internal theory, and it's based on the idea that moon rocks and water rocks seem to have a very similar composition of water in them. It's so similar that it's almost identical, which kind of brings us to the point where we know that at some point Earth received a collision from a relatively large um, body that was similar to Mars, and this very likely created the Moon. And we think that during this collision, the stuff that basically mixed up in there created both the Moon and the, and the Earth, and so it's probable, and it's very, very probable, that um, a lot of the rocks that were already formed here basically had water in them already, or some kind of a water-like element. And it's also very possible that this is what created Earth, and then this is also what, uh, this stuff that is basically going to orbit around Earth later, uh, is what created the Moon, and this is why the composition of both the Earth and the Moon is so similar. And, at the same time, this is probably why the uh, more likely origin of water on Earth is actually from within the Earth itself. And not really from the asteroids that may have delivered the water uh, to the surface later on. 
All right, so that's explanation number two. And the last explanation is actually one of the more interesting ones. And the one that I actually would like to one day study in a little bit more detail. But it's actually the one about the life on Earth. And specifically here, we're actually talking about Earth when it was completely different. Uh, it, it really didn't look that way. It looked more possibly this way. And this is actually uh, when there was life on Earth, but very, very different type of life. Uh, this is the theory I discussed before called the Purple Earth Theory. And we think that there was actually a lot of um, water, but it was probably purple because of the bacteria in that water. And a lot of the early bacteria that was present in early Earth atmosphere and early Earth water was actually um, what we refer to as chemoautotrophic bacteria. Basically, it's a bacteria that's uh, purple in color and it's a sulfur bacteria. It's basically a bacteria that uses CO2 and sulfur um, acids, basically H2S, to create water and to create a lot of other components like actual pure sulfur and um, a few other components. And what's interesting about this particular theory is that if we assume that Earth was at some, some point purple and there was quite a lot of um, bacteria on the surface here, as long as there was a lot of sulfur in the atmosphere, it could have totally produced enough liquid water or basically enough water in general to create oceans that we have today. Now, we don't really know if this is uh, true or not. It's very difficult for us to even find those bacteria because this was billions of years ago. But it's probable that if we dig deep enough, we might actually discover traces of sulfur bacteria and also traces of sulfur itself that may have been present here and that may have then resulted in the water produced uh, that we have today. So these are the three most prominent theories right now. And... Uh, Tomorrow, we're actually going to talk about the one that I think may have been the most likely of them all. Anyway, so hopefully now you know a little bit more about the origins of water on Earth, and hopefully you learned something from this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching various science and space videos using video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's explore those beautiful purple Earth, and see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.